Just check this out. I'm gonna go to the Hamburger Galaxy. Watch how that looks when it comes into view, how huge it looks with a scope like this. Spring is finally here. Galaxy season. I've got a good feeling about tonight. It's been a busy couple of weeks and uh, I've missed astrophotography and I've missed you guys. So I am so glad to be back at it. If you've been watching this channel for a while now, you'll know that I usually stick to the larger galaxies like Andromeda and the Triangulum. I guess you could say that this backyard has seen a lot of nebulae, but there are so many great galaxies available from basically right now, the end of March, right up until May available in the night sky. The problem is they're just really small. You need a ton of focal length to capture these beauties. And it's a huge jump too. Not 400, 500, even a thousand millimeters of focal length will do. More like 2,000, 2,500 millimeters. That's what's needed for these small galaxies. I've done a lot of planning leading up to tonight. Using Stellarium, I've isolated the galaxies that are available in my night sky for my backyard by brightness and more importantly by size. I wanted to choose a galaxy that fills a healthy amount of the image frame as well as something that I can soak in a lot of time from my backyard. I've got the image size of my camera punched in and the focal length of the telescope and I can tell that the blow dryer galaxy is going to be a great choice for tonight. It's a target I've never shot before, M100. The blow dryer galaxy is not too far away from the vacuum cleaner galaxy. I am not kidding, that is an actual galaxy. I wonder where the dishwasher nebula is. The telescope I'm using has a native focal length of 2800 millimeters, which is just nuts. But I've got a 0.7 times reducer on the back here, bringing it down to a cool 2000 millimeters. The versatile ZWO 294MC Pro one-shot color camera is coming out tonight, and this micro four-thirds sensor should frame up the blow dryer galaxy perfectly. I know what you're thinking, why am I shooting with a one-shot color camera when mono is better? Well, my monochrome camera is busy on an another rig tonight and I'm confident I can get a decent image of the blow dryer galaxy in one shot color one night's work. The hardest part about photographing galaxies at 2000 millimeter focal length or more is that your telescope mounts tracking accuracy and the auto guiding have to be spot on. So what most people do is use an off-axis guider so they're actually auto guiding at the same focal length they're shooting at, in this case would be 2000, or as I'm doing with an auxiliary telescope on top there with a focal length of about 450 millimeters. That does a fine job. A mini 30 millimeter, 50, 60 millimeter guide scope just won't do in this situation. The telescope is a Celestron Edge HD 11. It's an SCT, a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope that uses a big mirror at the back and a corrector plate at the front. There was a bit of a learning curve for me to use this type of telescope from what I'm used to, those refractors. But this is the telescope I used to photograph Saturn and Mars last year, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorites. All right, it's starting to get a little darker out now, which means I can polar align the mount, which has to be, as I said, spot on for this whole thing to work. Now, this mount was already polar aligned. It's been polar aligned for quite some time here sitting on the patio but I've got the QHY Pole Master on there to really refine it. I wanna see how accurate that polar alignment is. And if you really wanna get down to that level of refinement for polar alignment, I highly recommend this QHY Pole Master.
mount has been precisely polar aligned using the pole master device man it feels so good to know that you're spot on it really refines the process and it's actually really satisfying so sure enough the polar alignment on this mount although i thought it was you know pretty good it was quite a ways off so i'm going to get better tracking because of that tonight which feels really good i've also done my star alignment routine a lot of people do plate solving but uh, i do the star alignment routine using the eyepiece at the back of the telescope so i actually look through the telescope and see a few stars so i aligned on sirius which is like crazy bright and Dubé, which it's still on right now in the Big Dipper. Now, while it's on the star, I'm going to put a Batonoff mask on this SCT to focus the camera before we start slewing over to our target. And speaking of the Batonoff masks, one of the Astro Backyard subscribers 3D printed me a custom Batonoff mask for my Edge HD 11, because I mentioned I didn't have one in a video. So Josh, thank you so much for the Batonoff mask. I'm putting it to good use and I'm going to focus the SCT tonight with it. What you're looking at here is the Hamburger Galaxy, which is one of the three galaxies in the Leo triplet, if you've ever shot that with a wide field refractor before. So this is the Hamburger on its own. I think we're as, about as focused as we can get here. It's nice to see this test image of the Hamburger Galaxy going, this loop. It proves that our polar alignment and our star alignment went really well because it found this distant galaxy fine. So. By the time that blow dryer galaxy rises in about 30 minutes or so, we should be good to go.